Hi, thanks so much, Dan. Um, so I'm Frank Feist. Um, my partners, Wolfgang and Kerstin, we started Blue Cat Bio about five years ago. Um, we won the new product award at SAS uh, 2015, and that gave us a lot of exposure uh, into the pharmaceutical industry. And the blue washer, you know, the centrifuge blue washer was first positioned as uh, a new means to do media change in cell-based assays. And it was uh, very successful in that. Uh, most pharmaceutical companies now use the blue washer for that. It gives them better data, but uh, the focus of the talk today is uh, going to be uh, how to use that same principle of centrifugal evacuation for magnetic bead assays, because the advantage is that you don't need tips if you use centrifugal evacuation. Um, and that makes um, workflows much cheaper and uh, it's much quicker. So let's um, uh, dive uh, into this. The first question to ask is, uh, what are the problems with uh, conventional tip-based aspiration? And there's basically two problems and they're, they're really tough ones. So the first one is that the physical limits of um, uh, of tip-based evacuation mean that there is large and always variable residual volumes that are left over after the aspiration. And the other one is the potential for contamination. So going to the residual volumes first, what, what does that mean? So if, if you have a large residual uh, volume, that means that you have a lot of background in your data. Um, if it's variable, that means you have a lot of percentage CB. Um, and uh, so you will need many wash steps. And as you get into denser and denser plate formats, particular 1536, um, it's really, really hard to do. So what are the mitigation strategies that, that people use to get around those problems? So in the, in the context of magnetic bead assays, what people typically do is they pull the magnets to the side of the well, um, away from the needle um, as, a, as, a, as a way to minimize the residual volume. Uh, and then also you adjust the aspiration needle as close to the bottom of the well uh, to minimize the residual. But that creates its own set of problems, um, mostly cell or bead loss. Uh, having the beads off to the side um, is, a, is a little bit of a precarious situation. It's very easy to lose beads from that position. And what it also means that it creates a lot of variability across users and across sites because everybody adjusts the aspiration needle, for instance, slightly different. In terms of contamination, since needles, when you use the same one for different wells, carry tiny amounts of liquid over, they're not suitable for NGS type workflows. So the mitigation strategy is to use disposable tips and automated liquid handler, which in turn causes problems um, on the financial side because the cost of uh, disposable tips adds up. Uh, you also generate a lot of waste. Um, then there's the cost and the footprint of the liquid handlers. And then uh, the uh, magnetic bead separation steps, they really slow down workflows if you do it tip by tip. So the solution that we have is uh, centrifugal evacuation with a blue washer. I just want to show you this, um, this quick movie. So that shows the principle of, um, uh, of, mag of um, uh, centrifugal uh, evacuation. I'm just going to run it again. So the blue washer dispenses liquids into the plate, and then inside, uh, the plate spins uh, around a horizontal axis, and the centrifugal force then basically safely pulls the liquid out of the wells uh, with no contamination. And that solves the problem. So first off, uh, we have small and consistent residual volumes, typically smaller than 0.1 microliters per well, uh, which means that the Z prime, you know, which is a, a measure for, for assay data quality improves, uh, data becomes a lot more reproducible and you don't need to calibrate. Um, you eliminate uh, cell or magnetic bead loss, which means you get better images for screening, uh, you get higher sensitivity for magnetic bead assays, and you save magnetic bead costs because you don't have to overcompensate for magnetic for anticipated magnetic bead loss by putting in more to begin with. Um, you have no tips, which of course eliminates the cost of them. It uh, also saves the environment 
Um, and when you look at your, uh, how to organize your liquid handler, it uh, frees up a lot of space on deck uh, because you don't have to uh, store all those tips. And, and finally, it's, uh, it's, it's really fast. Uh, the blue washer evacuates any plate um, in less than 30 seconds, and that's measured from plate drop to plate uh, pick uh, in, an, um, in an automated setting. The, the, the design of the blue washer is inherently contamination free and it was a number of engineering approaches that we took uh, to make sure that that is so. Uh, the most important one is that the rotor accelerates really fast. So you don't have a situation where you sort of, you know, gradually uh, turn the plate over and you have seepage uh, across wells. Um, the second principle is that there is a hydrophobic interior surface. So as the liquid spills out of the plates, the enclosure around the, the rotor space gets trapped on the enclosure. And because it's hydrophobic, it forms nice little droplets. And then air pressure drives those drops to a groove at the bottom of the enclosure and eliminates them from, from the rotor space. And all of this happens pretty much instantaneously, so there's no backsplash in contamination that way. And finally, we have built-in cleaning methods that clean out the instrument between plates and, uh, and over time uh, for both biological and non-biological inputs. So how does it work? Uh, we call it centrifugal bead evacuation. It's pretty simple. Uh, you place your magnetic uh, your mica titer plate with your magnetic bead assay uh, on one of our magnetic carriers. You see one of the magnetic carriers situated here on the blue washer's nest. Um, then you start it um, and uh, after the bead settle and uh, the, the centrifugal motion expels the supernatant um, and uh, the, the, the magnetic carrier retains the, the, the beads and all of this of course works with no cross-contamination. So this works with no pit tips in, in high throughput, minimal bead loss. Um, and um, the application that I wanna focus on here for the next couple of slides is uh, Ampure magnetic bead cleanups of the kind that are used for instance for NGS library prep. So these are the magnetic carriers that we offer with the blue washer. We uh, design different types uh, depending on the plate that you use for your assay. So for instance, if you use an Eppendorf compatible 3D4 weld PCR plate, you would use this carrier. If you use a 96 uh, weld plate, you would use this carrier. Uh, for Luminex and uh, N3D type assays, you would um, uh, use carriers for, for slightly taller plates uh, as shown down here. So this is an example for an Ampure X-Speed uh, cleanup in a 3D4 weld plate. Uh, this was developed uh, by the Knight Lab uh, at the University of California in San Diego. In their conventional workflow, they dispensed uh, DI water with just uh, in an Eppendorf hand pipette, which now they do with a blue washer. Um, as the next step, you would then have to, you know, after you seal and spin down, you would have to evacuate. Uh, the DI water, they used um, a, a mosquito um, uh, uh, by uh, TTP LabTech uh, for that step, and they do that on the blue washer now. And then um, in the original workflow, they used to do two wash steps with, um, with ethanol. Um, with a blue washer, because it has much lower residual volume, you can get away with just one wash step. So when you add up the savings in tips and times across those, uh, those workflow steps, which by the way, have to be done twice, first for the adapter cleanup um, and then for the post amplification ampere cleanup, um, you save over 3000 tips per 3D4 weld plate. And if you quantitate that uh, in terms of money, it's $1.23 per sample, um, almost 500 bucks for, for a 3D4 weld plate. And uh, in addition, you cut hands-on time from, from seven hours uh, down to less than three hours. You know? So it's, um, it's, it's a very significant uh, savings in uh, cost and labor uh, for that lab. There's also a fully automated version of the very same workflow. Um, here I'm looking at, um, you know, the comparison would be a beckman the Biomech machine. If you run a, you know, a batch of four 96-well MTP plates, on MPUX speed that takes uh, about 45 minutes on a biomech. 
if you pair up a biomech with a blue washer, then that goes down to 10 to 15 minutes. And of course, you know, you eliminate the tips. And in a high throughput lab, if you process a thousand samples a day, you know, that's a very um, significant number. The, uh, you know, in the, in the next um, a couple of slides, I just want to go through some customer uh, presentations uh, and publications that we've seen recently. Uh, the first one here is by Quanterix. Uh, some of you might be familiar with their single molecule uh, digital ELISA technology called Simoa. Uh, they recently published a paper where they took the, you know, the sensitivity of that system up another two orders of magnitude. And the blue washer was, was a key enabler of that feed uh, because it reduced the, the bead loss, uh, in particularly in, in, in a low bead scenario. Normally they run it with 500,000 beads, uh, but in order to achieve the sensitivity improvement, they had to reduce the number of beads uh, down to 5,000. And with a conventional aspiration-based washer, they would experience more than 30% bead loss. With the blue washer, they took that down to zero. And at the same time, um, the residual was one that less than one microliter per well. So that, that also helped uh, eliminate background data. The other paper is of the night lab, uh, you know, which I mentioned before is the one that had uh, developed the NGS uh, Ampure workflow. And uh, they uh, optimized the sequencing protocol for leaderboard metagenomics. And uh, they used the blue washer for the no-tip uh, Ampure magnetic bead cleanups. And, um, you know, that cut their workflow time and re uh, reduced the cost, as I previously mentioned. And this was really a full validation of the blue washer in the context of NGS library preparation uh, to make sure that uh, recovery and, uh, and cross-contamination um, are equivalent to conventional methods. Uh, Frank, I just want to let you know that you have one minute remaining. Yep, and, and that's perfect because the, the final slide here was uh, just some demo results that we have with, with Luminex uh, uh, bead assays. You know, similar principle by, by using the, the blue washer uh, you get a more linear standard curve and uh, you get a better dynamic range. So uh, thanks for, for listening. Uh, you find more at uh, www.bluecatbio.com or you can just email me at frank.feist at bluecatbio.com. So uh, now if you have any questions, let me see whether I can open up my Q&A window. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate your time. Uh, also, for the audience, just so you know, uh, Spin, our first speaker, had to uh, jump out of the meeting. So uh, there were a couple additional questions that came in, uh, which I will forward to him, and we will get answers to those posted. Uh, this video will also be posted as well at the end if anybody would like to reference it. Uh, so, and while we're waiting for questions to pop up, uh, Frank, I just had a question regarding just the general. Uh, you know, is there, or do you have any values or data around the percentage of bead loss that you have seen or that your clients have used with the, the butt, with the washer? Yeah, the, uh, thanks, Dan. The, the, the bead loss is so low that it actually creates analytical challenges around precisely measuring it. Um, so the, you know, the Quanterix presentation really is the first that really sort of, you know, publicizes uh, going out with 0% uh, bead loss. Uh, and that is a very good analytical method because it's based on, uh, you know, the nanoliter wells that uh, they have in their Samoa chip. Um, so it's a very sophisticated way of uh, completely quantitating the amount of beads that go in before the assay steps are performed um, and then at the readout level uh, from the Samoa machine. Um, so so that's, a, that's a very good uh, uh, proxy for this. Okay, uh, one more question has arrived. Uh, while we're doing this, if you don't mind stopping your share and Jim Sweeney, if you wouldn't mind starting yours. Uh, the last question that I had is, uh, how many instruments or robotic systems has the um, Blue Cat BioWasher, has it been integrated in uh, fully automated systems? Yeah, so off the 220 global installed base, it's a pretty even split between fully integrated and automated uh, and standalone machines. So it's about 110 
And we've integrated with most of, of the big vendors. The biggest market share is probably high res bio, uh, but we also have Beckman, Thermo Fisher, Agilent, uh, Hamilton, and, and so forth. Great. All right, Frank, thank you very much. Thanks okay, so much, I'm, everybody. Uh, and now we're turning on to Jim Sweeney. Jim Sweeney, it's all yours.